So thank you everybody for coming. Good to see you all. I hope, you know, one of these months we'll be able to meet in person, but for now, for now, this is what we'll do. So I'm, I'm glad we can do it. So the Dutch house, let me, uh, let me ask right away about the house. Could you picture the Dutch house and did it, was it a particular house for you or a particular style? What did you, what did you see as you were reading? Um, I, I guess I, I had, I, I didn't really spend a lot of time focusing on it. I just listened to all the details, but um, I told one of, one of our members, Renee Hilgers, I said, you have to read this book because it reminds me of your house <laughs> and you, and I can just see a paint, a portrait of you in the house. Oh, wow. Yeah. And she says, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm anxious to see if she actually read the book and if she would agree to that. She is reading it. I don't think she's done. She emailed today and she didn't think she would make it because her horrible internet connection. But yes, yeah, she is reading it. Good, yeah. good. Excellent. I had trouble seeing this, you know, the big heavy. My, my husband grew up on the uh, outside of Philadelphia on the um, west, west of the city but in a uh, very, very nice area. And yeah, the main line, he's, he's, he's kibitzing here. And so I remember these large, you know, fantastic mansion types of houses on the way out to where he lived, where he grew up. And so I think that helped me visualize this house. And I had an image in my mind of the long driveway and approaching the house and the seat, seeing through from the front to the back and uh, the gardens and uh, yeah, and the attic and the Hello. second and third floor. I, I did visualize a lot, yeah. Mm -hmm. so didn't you have trouble you. thinking about, you know, they talked about the heavy woodwork and the fancy ceilings. Sorry about that, the Catholic church is going nuts today with their Fourth of July music, um, but, and then the seeing through from the front to the back because I don't think of as old houses with all the the heavy woodwork and the big rooms and the big paintings as being open and airy like that part reminded me. Those two things to me just didn't go together. It didn't bother me, but it, it just didn't go together. I felt the same way. You know, because the, all the windows and seeing through, it just sounds rather modern. And it, you know, it, and it was like an old house and with all the heavy woodwork and everything. I, I, the windows and seeing through and their descriptions didn't go together for me either. <laughs> I had a friend that grew up on Monroe Avenue in Green Bay in one of those great big houses and her family owned the Northland Hotel and every bedroom had a big fireplace but it was heavy dark wood so I felt that too it just it seemed too modern for that type of a house. Did they say exactly when this was built do you recall? Or did they give a date on that one? I, don't, I think it was early night early last century. I don't think it was old old. I think it was like the 30s. I think the 20s. I think 20s. It was the 20s. Yeah. I thought it was 20s also. Somewhere. Okay. Right. Yeah, I did too. They said they made their fortune after oh. World War One with cig you know with cigarettes and everything. Right. Yes. Yeah. So that's how I pictured it, like in the 20s. Okay. Yeah. I wondered. So you know, the, the flapper generation and jazz and all that kind of stuff maybe influenced some of the architecture. And that's why you got some of the glitz and glam with the Dutch. <laughs> so it was kind of a house of that generation trying to do pay homage back to their roots, but also of their era. Yeah, they had the, they had the top floor was the typical of the time dance floor party floor and you know the where you would go and have the big balls and that was that was pretty typical like um what's that famous novel um yeah, that's big, yeah, big, that's big. what is it 
Is Great. it the Great Gatsby? <laughs> yes, the Gatsby, right, with the with the ballroom in the top, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know I would have gone to a party there. I wouldn't have said no. <laughs> it might have been the wallflower on the back, but I would have loved to see it. So how would you have felt as that wife if you had been kind of poor and then your husband kind of throws on you that uh, bought this big mansion and she didn't really want it, but... How, how would you feel in that situation? I would have stayed. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hurt your kids? <laughs> I, I think I could, do I could do volunteer work out of that house. I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't just leave the house and my kids and go to India. No. <laughs> yeah. I'd stay put. I, it I, seemed to yeah, me that I, she had many more problems than just the house. I, I mean, that was a pretty exaggerated reaction to um, unknown wealth that her husband had accumulated. I mean, that, that is pretty shocking. I mean, really, it was shocking. But what a what a reaction to totally leave your life and jump into uh, an unknown life, no matter how much you care about the poor. I, I, it seems to me there were several issues there, perhaps like mental health. <laughs> I don't I'm not sure. <laughs> well, to leave her children, that was just, you know, I couldn't believe she would leave her children. That was terrible. So well, I, mean, she, I think and, women and do leave work. their children, but I, I think frequently you can leave your children without being, I think, mm -hmm. mentally unbalanced, it, uh, you know, uh, but she, it just seemed way more than, than I need to get out of this life. I, it just, I, and I'm she not had sure. Come, she had come from a, uh, convent, had she not? She'd mm -hmm. been in a convent before she met Cyril. Yes. Um, I, I can see I can see why her introduction to that house and the idea that she had to live in that house was really overwhelming. She was never going to be comfortable with the kind of um, people that, she, that her husband might have wanted her to be associated with and having parties for. Um, but I agree, I would I would never, I I had a real problem with the leaving the children part of it, um, and, and so Jane, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go along with you and hope that it was a mental health issue, and not, not, a, just, not a decision that a mother would make. You know, I just think in, she had other choices she could have made. Yeah, there were other choices, and she just didn't make them. But she came from oh, such oh. a poor environment, and he never asked her or showed her. She, he, she, he just kind of sprung it on her and she couldn't handle it and it wasn't her life at all i mean I, but it's I, not that i would have done something like this but but I, it's more it's more than this and and what makes it more than that is later on when she reconnects with her kids she dumps them again with the same place she really did Yep. And, and that to me was, was secondly unforgivable. That she's got this daughter that you know, is, is dying yep. and, and, she, and she bails again. So there's, there's something really sick about her, I think. <laughs> I, think she's, I think she was a little unstable too. Like when she shows up when Maeve's in the hospital, you know, I mean, she doesn't, she doesn't look quite normal. And nothing is ever said about where she had lived or anything because she just, you know, goes and lives with them and at, at, then in the house. So, I mean, I think she, there is something a little unstable there. <laughs> and she could have contacted the children once her husband had died. She could have, you know, thinking of the time frame, there was ways she could have reconnected with them even from afar even if she didn't want to go back to the house or to that area she could have at least told them she was alive <laughs> and that what her reasons were yeah i don't think she was made the most sympathetic character <laughs> <laughs> well, she, she's, she was made to be the villain and and ann patchett even admits that when she first wrote the book um she read it and then she threw it away and started right. over and because she she realized she had to make a villain she, and she didn't do a very good job of it. 
So she rewrote the book, taking something that most all of us would go, how could she possibly do that? <laughs> and, and that's kind of how that whole thing started. You know, Ann Patchett tends to look at family bonds, right? And so I think she probably took the worst possible thing that a mother could do, and that would be to just leave her kids. But the thing that like that, I think she did a great job. But, but the thing that was so interesting is that people said why didn't, or you know, she was asked in interviews why she didn't flesh out the character of Andrea more, and she said yeah. she's terrible at writing villains. Yes. Yeah. That was, that was something she said it's in an true. interview. It's true. She said, yes, and that she always has sympathy for them, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, well, that's interesting that she didn't think she had made Elna a villain enough when, in fact, she replaced her with another bad mother, essentially. Mm -hmm. that's, I don't understand that, Kelly. I, I think she just felt like it was a better way for her to do another family bond and put it away from Elna and put it on Andrea because that really wasn't who she wanted to develop. I mean, that's my thought. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, and she, also, she, she also said in, in the interviews that she wanted to write a book showing the stepmother she would never want to be. <laughs> there you go. Which, you know, that, that I think she did that. <laughs> the mother she never wanted to be <laughs> look at it that way too mm -hmm. I, I looked at it too as one more way that it was very much a fairy tale didn't did anybody else i even before i read the reviews or some of the things i thought this is like a fairy tale where you have a, a clueless dad um mm -hmm. not the kindest dad just sort of there and then you've got these awful mothers so that the brother and sister relationship has right. to develop if you have loving mothers it's like a lot of good children's literature, most of the classics, the adults are totally useless or absent. Mm. And then the child, the children yeah. become resilient and independent and survivors. But they and became so obsessive wanna, as hmm? well. Don't forget they became obsessive as well as well, all the yeah, other things but, you mentioned. You know, the, it really throws the, the relationship between brother and sister in, in, into the into forefront the front, without all the other stuff going on. Um, it sort of completes that fairy tale business of mm -hmm. um, finding your own way against great odds, although they had money behind them. I mean, there's a certain amount of privilege mm -hmm. here, but um, anyway, I just thought it added to that uh, fairy tale characteristics without actually tripping over itself being a fairy tale. <laughs> so kind of like Hansel and Gretel, huh? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Something, you know, just the requirement of the brother-sister relationship, which I you think- You know, they had a good uh, relationship and close and everything, but mm -hmm. I thought that was mean of Maeve to make him be go to medical school and become a doctor, just to spend as much as possible out of the trust money when he didn't want to be a doctor, he didn't want to go to medical school, you know. So why I mean, do you think why do you think he did it anyway? I think he did it for her. Yeah. It's the codependency of the brother and sister relationship yeah. that they had. Yeah. May was his mother. Yeah. I think you're his mom. Mm -hmm. One one of it one of his many mothers. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He had a lot. <clears throat> questions about Maeve. First, what did you what did you think of her as a character? Well, it was her story. <laughs> it was. <laughs> You're right. It was her story. She had a lot of resentment to work out. Yeah. A lot of resentment. Because she remembered her mother and he didn't. Yeah. But, but you can't blame her. I mean... 12, I think. Wasn't she 12 when her mom left? Or uh, 11, 11, maybe. That's pretty yeah, 11. Mm -hmm. it's very I, he, so he was only four years old. I think her resentment was more with Andrea, not with her mother. I mean, uh, but Danny, he had resentment towards his mother and Andrea. <laughs> yeah, he was more sympathetic with Andrea than with his mother. 
I don't think so. I, he had a he yeah. had a conversation with Maeve about Andrea at one point. And she said, why are you, you know, why are you um, defending her? And he talked about, well, it wasn't, you know, I remember some good times too and not all bad, but, he, right. but his mother, he was very angry with, I think. Because he didn't have those. She she was dead. I mean, <laughs> as you would. And then she shows up. I think he was upset all the way around where she came to the emergency room and recognized him and and it, he put two and two together later that she thought he was his father you know that would be shocking yeah yeah and then andrea mistook him for his father as well yeah remember mm -hmm. when she, oh, they first yeah. reunite and um and he was his father he was as clueless as his father yeah i mean i couldn't believe how old he was when he figured out the two hired ha help we're sisters, <laughs> right? And um, and then he just goes through life being directed either by absent women or his sister, who is too much present. And it's just, I don't know. He just strikes me as his father. He just and and when he and when he and married married the wrong person, maybe, and you know, just yeah. I think he was his father. <laughs> and he and he bought the house for. He and his wife. I forget yes, they did the same thing. The same, same thing, thing. without exactly. without telling her and without asking her, and just said, "Okay, here here's what I've done, and yeah. it's going to be great." Yeah. And then when they got that. divorced, she said, "I the house." <laughs> <laughs> I know. Moral of the story: Ask your wife before you buy a house. <laughs> <laughs> so, are there any sympathetic characters in this book? <laughs> I think that the the hired help were the most sympathetic characters. Yes, yeah, the two sisters, <laughs> and the and the cook. Fluffy. What about and Fluffy? And Fluffy. And Fluffy. Yeah, the chemistry yeah. teacher was pretty sympathetic. I liked him. Yeah. He tried to hold yeah. his feet to the fire, you know. And the start in the beginning. And, and made and, owner, and Maeve's boss. Boss, I was going to say the owner yeah. of the of the food distribution company. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. Otter Otter or something like that. Yeah, right. Ottermeyer. I don't know. Otter, Otter something right. or other. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then, and also Mr. Uh, Abel, you know, he really helped Danny. Mm -hmm. You know, he became a oh, lifelong yeah. friend. Yeah, that was the chemistry. Teacher. That was the chemistry teacher. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I, he he uh, had a relationship with him, continuing. You know, right. after. <laughs> And didn't one of Andrea's daughters, they were split too, weren't they? Wasn't one like no longer in contact with the family because Andrea right, was after right, all. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. It's a serious and, nut case too. And Norma was a good person. And then Norma. Bright, who she, was it Bright that turned out, seemed quite good, quite. Norma, good. Norma, no, Norma, 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 okay. Norma, Norma. Bright, was, Bright was in Banff. Uh, oh, uh, Bright Norma. was, okay. And so she never they, came back. She never came back. Yeah. So I thought no, it was that was interesting to me um, how those two girls ended up. But uh, uh, generally speaking, I didn't like most anybody in the book. The ancillary characters that we've talked about, I thought were, you know, they were trying to pull these people out of their or whatever they they were d obsessing over. Um, and the, and the two the two sisters I like the hired sisters, they were an interesting uh, pair as well, mm -hmm. which was another sibling relationship. You know? Right, so, exactly. Yeah. I wondered if the characters were modeled after people that the author knew, and I thought, oh my, that would be quite a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> so, did anyone else feel like before Andrea turned the kids out of the house? I didn't see her as being so evil. Oh, I did. Oh, she was. She did. She, she was did. so. She was yeah. so overbearing, just with whatever she wanted. I mean, he well, he gave up her husband. I mean, he didn't have anything to say. I I guess I guess I just didn't see her in the, in the framework of a fairy tale, evil stepmother. She was an absolute bully. 
Well, and she got worse as the book went on. She just kept getting yes. worse and worse. But in the very beginning, when she was introduced, she pretty much ignored her daughters. Mm -hmm. Remember, she, the daughter, the girls came in, and then she yeah. just left, and she said, "Well, you're going to watch my kids," and they didn't even know her. Yeah. Was was not, so I, to me, she likes it. Set the stage. I, I think Anne set the stage. It's like, okay, right away, you know, uh, no, this isn't gonna, this isn't gonna pan out. <laughs> I mean, I guess I always think of real child abuse, physical, as you know, that that to me then is so obviously evil that the the other didn't strike me as. Oh, I think emotional up can, to that level. Be, I think uh, emotional can be as harmful. Uh, yeah. I think she was really mean to the children. Why she made me? She made me move her room. I mean, that was very mean. Yeah. And then she chased them out of the house, and right. then she arranged well, yeah. that they would be they wouldn't get any money to speak of. Right. She was you know, consumed um, by the by the wealth of, and she wanted the house as her status symbol. Yeah. And uh, one thing though. One thing didn't help the relationship, you know, that when uh, her husband died, Maeve <laughs> went to the school and got Danny and they both went to the hospital <sighs> and then they go home and the San Sandy and Jocelyn <laughs> and the two of them are all crying. And that's how Andrea finds out that her husband died. Yeah. Yeah. That's why she kicked them out. That was why she kicked them out. I, I think, you know, I mean, she was upset, but she also was very angry, you know, over that. I don't think that was intentional. I think that was a big, just miscommunication related to how everyone was so shocked about what was happening. Um, yeah, I thought, I don't think they did it intentionally, but I, I think that they should have thought about calling the wife. Well, I and didn't that's rather understand. basic. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't understand why Danny felt so guilty about that actually, because I could I could see how well, quickly was, things were happening. I mean, that was all a very a very fast sequence of events. Wasn't it the secretary that called Maeve though, or one of and yeah. she yes. did not get along at all? So she chose the secretary. Yeah. Chose secretary. Not to tell the she wife. didn't want to call Andrea. Right. 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 Yeah. So it wasn't the kid's fault. It was Andrea's uh, behavior with other people getting yeah. payback. Yeah, no one liked her. <laughs> right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, how, and, and how, come the, how come the father doesn't get more, there's not enough anger against the father somehow. I he, thought was he was a real milk toast. <laughs> he was, he was, ter I mean, it, not even that. I mean, it was terrible that he let her do the thing she did to the kids. Yeah. I think he was equally poor in the parenting department. Equally not likable. <laughs> he didn't well, speak up at all. There where, where the author writes that if a woman leaves her children, how terrible right. it is, but if a man leaves her children, you know, leaves his children, it's a whole different story. Right. And, and that's, you know, the same thing here. We all feel the mother wasn't good, the stepmother wasn't good, but we, like um, Linda said, we just sort of ignore the father. It's just like he was yeah. floating through life and nobody blames him for floating. Right. Well, I mean, don't a lot of men just retreat and don't fight? I mean, it, it actually happens in real life, but they just let it go because they don't, they don't want to fight. They don't like confrontation. That's right. <laughs> Why was I mean, I don't so obsessed just, with the actually, house? Why did she need that house so badly? Do we ever, I never quite grasped. I don't know, it, it all, it's almost like she had some, some mental health issues from the very, very, very beginning. The fact that she was so obsessed with that. Didn't she, didn't she love it before she even started the relationship with him? Remember? Yes, yes. And they made quite a point of that, you know, yeah. that she loved that house. And she'd be gone for a while and then she'd come back and it was all very strange, you know, the how that all developed. But people are like that. And the, 
the, the main character of the whole story is the house. Yeah. So people have all these different relationships. Yeah, a lot of things house. happen because of that house, don't they? Yeah. I thought it was strange that the children would sit in front of the house after they were <laughs> adults and they had their own professional mm -hmm. lives. And, and that's the obsession. And, and just sit there. I don't know. It just seems like they were so successful in their own lives. You think they would have let it go. Or, I don't know. But it wouldn't have fit into the I story. think that was more Maeve than Danny, though. That was That was a lot because of her. I don't think he was the one initiating a lot of that. Mm. And once again, he floated through, you know, he becomes a doctor because his sister tells him to, really. That's floating through life. <laughs> he does take a moment for himself, though, and starts doing the real estate stuff. Mm -hmm. Kind of on the yeah. side, he does take a piece for himself. He doesn't declare it to everyone because he it's surrounded by so many strong female people. Yeah. But he does take a part. You know, he doesn't do everything for everyone, but he definitely feels attached to the people and following through for them. Well, I, I, I think May had a big hole in her psyche from all how she was raised and the house was the one piece of security that was always there for her as she was growing up. Both parents were gone. The stepmother was not nice. She had to be a mother to the two children. The only thing that was consistent were the, the two women who helped in the kitchen and the house. Well, it is called the Dutch house. So the house is yeah. hit to um, their foundation, mm -hmm. especially for the children. I think. I thought it was interesting when I looked up Ann Patchett's husband actually is Dutch. Oh, really? Interesting. Ooh. Yeah. At least his name sounds oh. Dutch. Okay. She says that she came up with the name of the book. She was originally going to call it May, but because right. she owns a bookstore and she knew that wouldn't be a good title. <laughs> so she picked uh she picked dutch house and so maybe she picked dutch because of her husband i don't know but you know the house is such a central figure in the book i mean that's really it's the center of the book it's yes. it's life in and of itself and anyway but she said she said well dutch and house have the same number of letters and i thought that would look really good on the cover <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I, I laughed when I read that too. So selling the books, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's all about it's how the book looks. I didn't realize it, but um, uh, evidently, when you're writing and you know you're trying to publish, a lot of times the title that you want to use, your editor, you don't even really pick the title. I mean, you right. have a title yeah. in your mind, but the editor picks the title. They pick the cover. Uh -huh. They do all of that, and I'm like, wow. I love it. I'm shocked to hear that, but she can do it herself, I guess, because she knows. Well, I just uh, figured it was the background of those original Van Hoff, you know, because yeah. you know, they had brought all those things over uh -huh. from the Netherlands, you know, the mantles, the duft, and all that. Right, stuff, right. You know. <laughs> so that's, that's from her husband, then. There we go. We give him credit. <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone else happen to read the interview that was done in uh, UK where she uh, says that the book's genesis, Anne Padgett says that the genesis of the book was an unlikely uh, character. It was Donald Trump. <laughs> she was watching the presidential election, according to this, I'll read uh, in quotes, I was watching the presidential election, says Padgett, and I had this feeling that there was this giant celebration of wealth, that the best thing in the world you could possibly wish for right. was to be rich. I became fascinated by the idea of being repulsed by wealth and just walking hmm. away from it. Hmm. 
Huh. It like totally changed my whole idea of the book. I'm like, okay, now I'm dissecting it. I'm like, oh. <laughs> but you're right. I mean, through it, she's, she's talking, she's got wealth in there always. It's wealth and poverty and they're whiplashing between the two. The kids are thrown out on the street practically, right? So they were rich, then they were poor, then they worked their way up again. And I, it's just interesting how she's contrasting all of that. I think it wasn't really though till his daughter became a film star that she got as rich as the original. Oh, that's true. Family. Yeah. yeah. And, then and then bought she the bought house. house. Yeah. But, but look, I mean, Danny, what do you do? He gave up med medicine to become a real estate person? <laughs> it's like, oh, no. <laughs> but he was a developer. He wasn't a, just a real estate agent. A like Donald. Yeah. yeah. Well, but not like Donald because, and not like his father, because I remember when he was collecting rent with his rent. father. Right. He would go to these, his father was kind of a slumlord. You know? yes. Yeah, that's true. Yeah which was surprising considering that his father kind of i think knew what it was like to not have money and to another black mark against that father treated yeah. those people well when he kept and, if, if, and if you remember he had insider information that's how he got his start <laughs> you know by right. buying, buying right. those two parking lots <laughs> exactly <laughs> but his father was nice. I mean, yeah, he did own a lot of poor homes, but, you know, he talks about when they'd go and collect the rent, if there was something that needed being done, he, he had the tools in the trunk, and, oh, the it, and his father was very comfortable, probably more comfortable with that, those people than he was with the people he met living in the Dutch house. But my impression was he did that stuff for the more middle class tenants, but then when they got into the really poor tenants, really? the right. tools did not come out of the trunk and right. you know, they were yeah. left to their own devices. Right. Yet, yet he did when this child was sick, when the father, there was something, that was an odd story. and he picked up the child and took him yep. to the hospital. hospital. But see, the thing is that we always expect people to be good or bad. The fact is that sometimes you're good, sometimes not so good. Yeah. yeah. And Danny was too. I mean, Danny was not a bad person, I didn't think. He just, uh, uh, he just was not a particularly strong person, I think. Danny just went along a lot, much of the time, except as Morgan said, he did, he did go he was determined to follow his love and that is of the real estate but mm -hmm. he talks a number of times about realizing how he has not paid attention to people and not thought about um, like, like he didn't think about jocelyn and sandy being to your leg and he didn't think about um, you know, having these deeper conversations with people. So he, he was sort of, he had built a wall, kind of a wall around himself, I felt like. He was just a protective sort of thing. Um, and just got through, just getting, just surviving. Yeah. You know, at the end, unless I'm forgetting something, they sort of tie it all up, what everyone's doing. But mm -hmm. I didn't get any, like, big happy ending for Danny, you know, I mean, you know, it, right. it's like, <laughs> it's just sort of well, hanging there. Except Don't for me, success was his happiness part, 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 you know, his, yeah. his big success was his daughter's, his success. Yeah. But how about, um, at the, the way it ends, it's like he's looking at his daughter right there out in the garden and he thinks it's May. Right. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. He just can't let May go. He just, his daughter, it just embodies made to him. Well, I mean, I understand it, but I think that was an interesting ending. Yes. Did you think, did it feel right that May got the house in the end? Do we think it's what, Tracy? Do we, how do we feel about May getting the house in the end? Did that feel, feel right? Good. Yeah. In a way, yeah. I thought it was a great twist, actually. 
Justice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Maeve, Maeve really, I don't think ever really let go of that house. Right. And, and her namesake finally owned the house. And put her Not picture that. back up in the living room. Put the right. picture I thought that was a great finale when she put the yes. picture back. It was. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Ann Patchett has, has that um, painting in her home. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know that. She had it commissioned. She had given an artist friend of hers a couple pages of the book or something, a description of Maeve or something, and he painted it, and she has it hanging. I think it's there. beautiful. I think it's a beautiful painting. And yeah, yeah, I agree. And it I really think he draws you in, it. doesn't it? It just catches you. It caught, it caught me anyway. I was like, she gave the artist so many days to paint it—a very short time—and he got it done in really two, yeah, two, or three two days, weeks. Yeah. I think it was two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. It was a short time. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Mm -hmm. She she also mentioned um, that one of the reasons she chose that style of painting is it's called a direct gaze and there are very few yeah. portraits of women that have direct gazes they're always almost always to the side or whatever if you um there's a famous one of um i can't remember who it was um but it, they were in great trouble because the woman in the model is actually looking at the viewer and it's just not part of the um the huh. way women are painted and so in some ways this direct gaze from this child looking out at you speaks speaks also to the theme of the book about women. Um, maybe women making decisions, maybe women women leading their lives as they see fit uh -huh. um, and not as others see fit. Um, that, that, that direct gaze in art has a long history. And she said that's really was important to her to have the portrait of um, may be a direct gaze. You know that that speaks a lot to what um, Ann Paget said. She said that Danny was a very easy character for her to write, to, mm -hmm. for her to create, because she said she's known many men who are smart and charming and funny and interesting, but they have no understanding of the fact that their whole life is built on the shoulders of the women, the women who, carry who carry them, them. around. That's yeah. interesting, Ben. That would make great sense that she chose that style of for the cover. I was glad I read this one as a real book rather than a on my Kindle because I could see the the cover. When you're reading on yes. the Kindle, yes. you don't you don't see the cover, you don't see the title, and that really did. Now, Tracy, didn't you say you listened to it? I did. I did. I, I did as well, and Tracy, I'm with you. Tom Hanks can read to me all the time. I think he needs to be read every book out there. <laughs> yeah, he did a fantastic job. I mean, he was Danny, and he did a great job. And Anne said, you know, people often ask her, how did you get Tom Hanks to do this? And she said, I asked him. You know, they're, they're friends. And so she asked him, and he happened to say yes. So she didn't have so to give him a direction or anything. He just... He was Danny. Did so it. what kind of a voice did he have for Andrea? I'm curious. Um, well, everyone else was in, in, in third character, right? Pretty much. Did, it wasn't it just Danny talking? Yeah, he didn't really change. He didn't change oh. voices. No. OK. No. Maybe inflection a little bit. Yeah. It, yeah. It's worth I assume, Tracy, you have the audio. Do you have the audio book in the library? I do. I think you all should at least take and listen to it, just a part of it. Maybe like the last chapter. What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> just throw it in right now, Tracy, and play us a little bit. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can always listen to the preview of the audio on Overdrive and not check it out. Oh, okay. that's well, true. Thank too. you. Yeah. Oh, good point. Thanks for that hint. <laughs> Isn't it going to be a movie too, Tracy? Or did you say that about this particular one in December or something? Or did I, is that a different book? No. It's coming, it's being made into a movie, isn't it? 
but I don't know when. Okay. Yeah, I didn't see any dates or anything, so I don't know. Hmm. I've read a lot of books lately, <laughs> so maybe I'm getting them confused. <laughs> um, what did you think of, of Dave and, Man and Maeve, Danny and Maeve, getting their names all mixed up, when their mother returns, how different their reactions were? Yeah. What did you think of that, and did you, could you see one side better than the other from your, your point of view? I think it was somewhat understandable because Maeve was older, you know, she knew her mother for some years before her mother left and could have met and did have memories and had that yearning that was then fulfilled when her mother returned. And there's also the female connection, whereas Danny was only four. So I'm not sure what kind of memories he had and would have been more upset yeah. about the idea that why why did my mom leave me i mean kids always think that you know i mean even in divorce situations kids think well it must be my fault why is why are right. my parents you know did i do something wrong why did they leave um so yeah their reactions i think were somewhat understandable yeah. although although i was a um i was a little surprised with the intensity of maves I mean, she was very, very welcoming to her mom, I felt, coming back more than I might have been. But... Who was it in the book that well. said, um, when, let me think, I can't remember how this goes, but it was something about when, her, something about when, when Elna comes back, Maeve would die. But what there was a first part of that when she oh. left, did, I can't remember. Can you fill me in? Was it the father was going to die? But no, it wasn't. It was. Maeve had, Maeve had died. Maeve had diabetes, and when her mother left originally, I think she was not eating well, right? And um, so she had some, you know, real physical um, difficulties, right. Right. and by her mother coming back and leaving and coming back it was this turmoil um and so i don't remember at the end patricia when she came back for good why someone felt that Maeve would i can't remember danny danny was not. saying it was a thought that danny had that someone had said it to him maybe one of the um housekeepers had said and I think that when she was younger, and I think that was yes. related to when yeah. Maeve was younger. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, because of the not right. eating, being so upset and not eating and the diabetes and, you know, having a... Right, but someone said, and I think it was the father actually said that she almost died when the mother left and if the mother came back, she, she was afraid she would die again. And Almost, yeah. you know, die yes. again. <clears throat> That's interesting. I couldn't put my finger on it. I think they had kind of eventually said it sounded like the mother had left a few times. Times, right. And for longer and longer periods of time. And right. I think the mother kind of had gotten enough of it and knew well, it was culture. harmful for the health and that could keep doing that too. I, I think so, yeah. I thought Danny's jealousy of his mother coming back and stealing his sister was was predictable and very very gut wrenching. I could just feel it, you know, that anger. It's like you're coming back and now you're going to steal my sister from me. No, or my, or my sister slash mother. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I mean, you know, really, exactly. He's losing another mother, kind of. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I thought that was very visceral. I I really felt that. It's like. Yeah. I don't know what to think about Elna taking on Andrea as a project. <laughs> I wanted to hit her up the side of the head. <laughs> you know, couldn't, they, couldn't she just have spent some time with her children and grandchild? Yeah. I mean, again, I'm, not, I'm trying not to make it because she's a mother she should have. But it, it's a family relationship. She could have. Uh, I, it was just interesting that she, again, as um, who, one of you mentioned that she once again abandoned her children. Uh -huh. 
It was completely in character, in my opinion. Completely in her character. I, I, I don't know. I, she seems to constantly need to repair people, um, mm -hmm. to fix them, to fix other problems at the expense, essentially, of, of, of others. And I can't see that she can see that. But, um, Except she didn't stay to fix her own daughter's diabetes. So you're right. Yeah. So it's it just is it just was strange. I think it might was was predictable or within within her um, inner world. I just don't know quite how I feel about that. The impulse was nice to help Andrea because she needed all the help she could get. But um, you know they could have hired somebody. But all of a yeah. sudden, Elna has this great need to help her former she, husband's she, current widow. You know, I she, it just. I, it was she just, seemed, I just thought it was weird. She was helping the daughter, though, too, don't forget. She was helping Norma. Right. But Norma wasn't hers, and it wasn't, right, right. wasn't even right. her ex-husband's. And <laughs> I mean, and I'm not saying Norma shouldn't have been helped, but, you know, right. it's just, um, there were so many other some... people in her life that could have used her presence um, yeah. to work through things, to just become better <laughs> as a family. Um, I, I don't know. I just thought there she is once again, abandoning. Right. Doing, she I don't know, to, doing what? God's work? I yeah, mean, she, she seemed she, to she do just, some she comparison. Should have, she should have stayed a nun. You know? <laughs> yeah, really, really. She seemed to do this comparison yeah, and, right. she, and she compares <laughs> the very least of people uh -huh. with, with whoever else she's comparing them with. In, in her mind, Maeve and Danny had things so much better than Andrea, who has nobody, essentially, who really cares for her, right. deeply cares. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, this religious idea of the least of you is who I'm going to take care of. Right. Mm -hmm. And she wasn't bringing relationship into it at all. And, and don't forget that in all these interviews, Ann Patchett, well, at least one, one of the interviews, she says she did a ton of research on Mother Teresa that she never actually used in the book. <laughs> so she, <laughs> so she yeah. definitely had that in mind for, uh, for Elna. I thought when that Elna was in India, she really wasn't helping with the people directly. Remember they, she said they were fundraising. fundraising. She and was fundraising. She became fundraising. a fundraiser. Can do that she she didn't stay that long. No, she wasn't there that long. The kids thought she was there for years. But uh -huh. she was there for a short time and then came back. Yeah. Most of, the reviews, most of the reviews I read mentioned her themes of um, wealth, poverty, and class. Uh -huh. And they think this book uh, demonstrated those themes mm -hmm. really well. And, and it is the switch, we talked about that, between wealth and poverty. Uh, and it doesn't take much to go from one to the, well, it takes a while to build wealth, but you can be poor really quick. Right. <laughs> Um, and class, I, I've been trying to think about class and mostly where it seems to show up is in the slum landlord business um, and how we treat it as different tenants, but it, but it was really in the help. Um, Sandy and um, Jocelyn <clears throat> Fluffy, um, they, they were part of the family, but never quite, you know, right. it, you said, we see that in other books as well, like, you know, right. the help, and, um, it, but I, it, I don't know if she added anything to the discussion, she being the author, and if she added to the discussion of class differences or just sort of used the same, um, the same, the, used the same devices that almost all authors use. <laughs> you know, I, class I, differences. I, 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 I was trying to figure out why the New York Times was, instance, really, or I think it might have been the Times, anyway, they, they thought it was a good exposition and themes developed of wealth and poverty and class. Well, Jane, Andrea, that's uh, what she was uh, after, is the class. Andrea was from nothing. Right. Was and, the house, and the husband bestowed a certain amount of class to her. That was the big deal for Andrea, I thought. Mm -hmm. I agree. So did anyone else feel any sort of connection of this story to the movie Parasite? Because it, it uses the house as the central theme <laughs> of wealth and poverty and class. And I just sort of 
felt like it was, I was, there were parts of it that made me think one to the other. Mm -hmm. If you, if anyone saw that movie. I think we all have to now. I've heard good things about it. <laughs> oh my God. It's an interesting movie, but I didn't think, but I didn't relate it. I would think more about the movie The Help, actually, as Jean said. Well, is Parasite, that's the one where she gets uh, her whole family yes. serving that other rich Yes, family. they all become servants in that. And their, yeah. their apartment is like a lower level and it yes. floods and all that. Okay. <laughs> Korean. Yes. Korean. Best, best picture. Best yes. Picture? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But actually, I thought the father had... Uh, he had identified what the problem was with the mother to begin with. Didn't he tell one of the children that their mother was mentally disturbed and that she felt it was more important to help people? He did. There was, there was a statement like that early on in, in the book. So the father understood that there was something not right with her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he took it as a fault that she would, I think it was an example of giving a stranger on the street her coat, but not right. Right. her exactly. own family. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, ladies. I'm going to have to go. My dogs need to go out. No. <laughs> it was nice uh, meeting you. And when you got to go, you got to go. Thanks for joining us, Tina. Tina. Oh, yeah, I hope to join again next time. Yes, I'm back. Duty calls to help <laughs> <laughs> Good night, ladies. Good night. Good night. Good night, Tina. Good night. Tracy, is there a possibility that we'll be able to meet face to face sometime? We think sometime. <laughs> I mean, like, next month. Why couldn't, you be up, why couldn't you be upstairs where people can be, uh, you know, a little bit apart instead of always? Currently, doing that's this? not open either. The whole building no, next month is supposed to. I, I haven't heard a date for sure. Maybe you know more than I do, but I haven't heard a date for sure. So what about oh, in the town hall? Would no, it's closed currently. They're closed. Okay. There's, well, I'm not, there's some uh, talk about the Sister Ray Library in August doing it outside. There's talk about it. I don't mm -hmm. know if it'll materialize. Uh, the leader asked the librarian. Uh, Christina, mm -hmm. if she would do the butterfly one out in the yard. <laughs> uh, oh. So we'll see. <laughs> we're actually going to do that here at, at, my, at my home. We're going to be in the driveway in two weeks and we're going to discuss this book. Yeah. And, and we're all going to have our masks on and we're doing it at seven at night so that it won't be quite so hot. And everyone brings their chairs and we'll just sit in a big circle. We're going to try it because we'll we're like really tired of being locked yes. up. Yeah. Yes. Well, you'll have to send me an email and let me know how that goes. And if you I will. <laughs> what yeah. I want to know is when you start meeting in person again, is there a way to zoom in so I can be at the meetings? I think that would be a good option. Yeah. Because we've had some people that can't make it yeah. every month. So this would be a good, a good way to do it. Right. Yeah. I like the Zoom. I think it's very handy. Sure. I mean, we don't have options now, but I think. In the winter when it's cold and the roads are bad, it works. Yeah. And we are actually streaming live on Facebook right now. So you guys Oh my god. No. <laughs> no. Take my name off. <laughs> off. Rick, take my name off that screen. <laughs> I'm sure Tina would be delighted to know that. <laughs> <laughs> So um, has anyone else read, or what other books have you read by Ann Patchett? Bel Canto. I read, I read two of them. I read, no, actually, I've read three, then. I've read Bel Canto, um, oh, I read Run, and I read Commonwealth. And I, I'm almost mixing them up because they're all family relationships, yes. and I read them in a short period of time. But uh, I think that, that the, this one was the strongest of the of the Commonwealth or Run, as I recall. Do you feel that she developed the characters and the um, sort of the different uh, emotions or whatever 
the struggles, do you think that was developed better in this book than the other ones? It was more evident um, and, and more, more definite, you know, because this was such an unusual house and, and, and all of these people were way, way different than, than anybody else in, in right. the other books, as I recall. Right. Interesting. I, I did read Bel Canto quite a, quite a number of years ago, but, but it, it is one book that I can remember parts of, which is, which is saying that it must have been, a, you know, that it was a good book. I can't say that of every book. <laughs> I remember reading that two years ago. Yeah, it's, it was pretty uh, memorable. And I, and I saw the lyric opera version of it as well. Uh, which was terrible, by the way. Somehow it just didn't it didn't uh, project to the to the stage. Book was much better. Well, she does have nine novels, four nonfiction. I did read Truth and Beauty last year, and that was quite good about a friend of hers with a, a facial disfigurement and all that she goes through. Um, but she's also doing children's books. It might show up backwards. It does. So I read Lamb Slide. <laughs> Lamb slide. <laughs> really? <laughs> it's cute. The lambs, they hear somebody talking about a landslide and they Is it think, cute? Is it a good book? It's cute. Is it good? She's got another one coming, kind of the same thing. Um scapegoat. Uh, <laughs> so watch for that. I see a theme developing here. Yeah, right. <laughs> Horse play. <laughs> I'm good. Dandy Lion. <laughs> we can help her. <laughs> Just send her some ideas. Uh, monkey oh, business. Also a bestseller. And a pull. <laughs> I believe it was. I believe it was Marsha. I haven't Sorry. read it, but I just remember reading the title a lot of places. Yeah, it came out 2016, so that was one of her more recent ones. <clears throat> Which one was, was that? Which one? Commonwealth. Oh, okay. Was that good? Who the those of you who read Commonwealth, did do you recommend that? Commonwealth? It's it's worth reading. I don't I don't remember I read it recently and I'm not coming up with all kinds of little you know details that make it wonderful. So I, I guess I'd have to say it's not terribly memorable. Because I don't remember a lot about it. It takes place in Chicago, apparently, is what yes. I read. That's why I was curious. Yeah. And, and that's always interesting when you know where something is. I mean, that's why we yeah. have these county books, because we, <laughs> where they are. And it's not that most of them have, have been all that memorable otherwise, that's for right. sure. Right. <laughs> I know when I read Bel Canto, I liked it, but I thought it dragged in places. I was just like, okay, I got the idea. Now let's move this along a little bit. I thought it was a <laughs> slow moving book for me. So she's improving with age then, right? Yeah, <laughs> probably. Not very old though. <laughs> what is she, 50 something? Is she 50 in her 50s? Probably, I would. Yeah, I guess maybe late fifties. Yeah, she was born in sixty four, I think. Is that right? Yeah, fifty something. What do we know about her? I have it's I didn't under I didn't pull out any uh I didn't do a Wikipedia on her. She runs uh, a very nice bookshop in Nashville, Tennessee that I've I've been to. Where was she? Is she from Tennessee? No, I don't. I don't know. She, she was born, born in, in Los Angeles. I don't know if that's where she's yeah, from. Yeah, she, was she born went to a Angeles private Catholic school for girls. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's where the that nun idea that's came that's in. Right. <laughs> oh well, you're right. I, so I pulled this up. So she she went to school. She was a student at Sarah Lawrence College. And um, she would spend holidays and weekends in Winecote, Elkins Park, and Jenkinstown. So I think that is how she developed her, uh, right. her, her map <laughs> of this book, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah. 
I and her, and her father had been long divorced from her mother, it says. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, somewhere I read that she took, she also uh, was the caregiver for her mother. And uh, as her mother was very ill and dying, that she was the caregiver. That's right. And I she guess had that, her mother had Alzheimer's, I think. Was mm -hmm. it? Okay, so and maybe it's, that's why this fate of, of Andrea and someone taking care of her. Um, comes from. Interesting. I, I found it just really utterly fascinating, and we talked about it at the very beginning, that she had written this whole book and then threw it out. And mm -hmm. I just find that um, it's just amazing to me. You, that it must have been, uh, who knows how long, a year's worth, years of work, or she just she recognized it as not, which, you know, happens with artists as well. You just reach a point, and you say, this is just not it, and it's right. gone. Mm -hmm. But writing seems, I don't know why, it may, perhaps because I'm not a writer. It just, it, that just astonished me, I think, yeah. that she threw it out to start again. She changed the voice in which she wrote it. She changed the point of view. She just changed all kinds of things, even though it was this, the same book, but, you know, the, trying to tell the same story. Uh -huh. I, I just thought that was interesting. And I think actually an incredibly strong thing to do. I'd love to know how many writers do that so far into the process. I got the feeling that this was almost like a, a done book. I mean, maybe not all the editing and stuff, but right. way, not like, oh, chapter one sucks, I'm gonna throw it out. Right. <laughs> so, right. Tony Reed's authors. Oh. Um, so Jane, did she do that? Do you know she did that because her editor kind of encouraged her to start over, or did she do that because of from no, reading it was, from reading it, it, was it, it just seemed it was her. She just said no. This is not okay. It. Yeah. Okay. What were you saying, Morgan? I, I was saying um, one of our Door County Reads authors um, said that he also did that, where he wrote because in his um, author's talk at the state on the stage for us. He apologized to his wife in the audience saying, I promise I'm never going to do that again. He threw away two <laughs> years worth of work because it wasn't good enough and started over. And it must have been something enough that he had to apologize to the public, <laughs> to his wife. <laughs> yeah, it, that just strikes me as being, it's so hard, it's, it, I would be, it just strikes me. I know how hard it is for me once I get invested into in something to just, give it up or now she you know obviously she reworked it in some way but I just thought that was an interesting thing it makes me think that it's art it's art writing is an art and some mm -hmm. artists are perfectionists and yeah. it's all or nothing and that in the full truth of all or nothing <laughs> I, I think so it didn't fulfill the goal of what she was trying to do I think is mm -hmm. what it was yeah Anyway, it was just it was just interesting to throw out so much work. <laughs> Takes a lot of fortitude to do that. That's that's what I think. <laughs> it's like that the Dutch girl, the Dutch the, the portrait, that direct gaze. It's like I'm doing this and you can't stop me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will again next month. Our next book is An American Marriage. So I hope you can all get your hands on that. There's plenty of copies in the library and now that we can request things, you should be able to get an actual book. Or it is readily available on Hoopla, both in book form and audio. So if you're liking that, go and, and get your copy there. Um, and did you see the news, speaking of Door County Reads, too, that the next, next pick is Station Eleven, which we all read. I <laughs> I did see that, yeah. yeah. It, it might be interesting to rediscuss it though after this after this year. Oh, yes. <laughs> we, uh, we, we got a we got a grant too from um the big read, right? Which is nice. Because we, we haven't had one for a few years, several years, right. many years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If we want a copy of that from the big read, just to kind of refresh, do you have them or how do we get those? Yeah, but that'll be that'll be later this year. Yeah. Right. Okay. Because we're part of the of the NEA Big Read, it was announced way earlier than it usually is. But once we get into fall and winter, then we'll start. 
Okay, We're expecting to, to do the same thing like we did this last year to do the release um, right before Thanksgiving. So around that weekend of Thanksgiving. Mark your calendars to come in. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you feel so smart that we've already read that for book club? Thinking, oh my God, we're so ahead of the curve. Uh -oh. oh, just way ahead of the whole country. <laughs> yes, yes. Hey, Morgan, yes. you want to model your t-shirt? I think maybe we all need to get one of those. This is last year's, um, one of last year's for Libraries Rock. Wow. That's cool. I like it. Summer programming. Yeah. Last year, yeah. <clears throat> Very me. nice. There Very were quite nice. a few really good t-shirt designs. I'm sad that I didn't get all of them. I only got like three, but they're all <laughs> like 80s rock bands and stuff. So, so tell me, because um, I'm not there, how do the cherries look on the street? The chair in Egg Harbor? There are cherries this year, right? Sturgeon Bay has the cherries. Oh, Sturgeon Bay has the cherries. Egg Harbor has the eggs. <laughs> Yes. I thought it seemed <laughs> odd that they would switch to cherries, but okay. So Sturgeon Bay, so how do they look? Are they pretty exciting or are they not out yet? Yeah, they're good. Yeah. Robertson's are going to have yellow, the yellow Queen Anne's in two weeks at the Jacksonport Farmer's Market. She told me that today. Wow. And they're beautiful. They're the yellow ones with the little peach tinge to them. They're sweet. Really? Sweet. You can they're see back. the cherries <laughs> online. They're beautiful. Yeah, it's the visitors bureaus, the Sturgeon Bay's visitors bureau. I think their destination Sturgeon Bay is what they're called now. Okay. They have a post that has all of the pictures. You know. In the oh, book. good. I'll check it out. Renee sent me some pictures. She's keeping me posted on how Thank high you. the how high the lake is. Oh, yes. <laughs> how many people are not wearing masks? Oh Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Rock Island is closed for the season because of the high water. Oh yeah, I can imagine. Completely yeah. closed, yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw that but, the big the big rock, what is it, the champagne rock fell in at Fish Creek? Yeah. Oh really? Oh, I didn't even Early. know that. Yeah. Oh. What fell in? Champagne the rock champagne? off of Fish Creek. Mm-hmm. Mm. That was when I grew up, that was exactly a mile from my house. So when I was trying to train to be a runner, which didn't work, um, I would run to Champagne Rock, go sit on the rock for a while, run back home. <laughs> <laughs> Where was that located? It's on Cottage Row and Fish Creek. Okay. And it's just, it's just a, a narrow little path that the town owns, and then it was a rock that jut out into the bay, or the water, not the bay there. Um, unfortunately, there's always been a cottage on one side, but a few years ago, somebody built a massive house almost right on the property line. So you feel like you're, you know, just walking between these houses. And there's some that have a theory that maybe the blasting they did to put in that house may have sped up the, oh, sure. the falling of the rock, which is sad to think about. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you, everybody. Oh, there. <clears throat> I enjoyed it. I just got back. Bad internet. <laughs> oh, well, now we're all saying bye, Jane. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. And uh, look, we'll probably end up doing this again next month. So watch your emails. And thank you, Tracy. Tracy. Nice seeing you all. That's great. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Tracy. Bye. 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 Bye.